In a previous video, I defined derivative and I explained how to interpret it at slope. I assume you have watched that one first, it is linked in the description. In this video, I will explain how to interpret derivative as rate of change. I will begin with an example of rate of change that appears in our daily life, velocity. Everybody uses velocity or speed. Let's say I am driving my car in the highway. Right now, my velocity is 180 km per hour. What does this mean? If we ask the random person, they could probably claim they understand this statement, so we should be able to explain it easily, right? Let's try. A naive explanation would be, in the next hour, I will drive 180 kilometers. But this is not true. Knowing my velocity right now, by itself, does not tell me much about what happens one hour from now. Instead, perhaps I could say that if I continue driving at the same velocity, in the next hour, I will drive 180 kilometers. Yes, this could be true, but it is cheating. I cannot use the word velocity to explain what velocity means. If I already know what continue driving at the same velocity means, then there is little to explain. Let's take a different approach. I know that in the next hour, my velocity is likely to change. So instead of an hour, let's take a smaller time interval. In the next minute, I expect I will drive about 180 kilometers divided by 60, which is 3 kilometers. This is still not necessarily true, but it is better than my first attempt. It is at least more likely to be true. And now I see what to do. Let's take an even smaller time interval. In the next second, I expect I will drive 3 kilometers divided by 60, which is 50 meters. This is still not exactly true, but it is a pretty good approximation. It is very close to being true. And in the next millisecond, I expect I will drive 50 millimeters. This is even better. While it is still only an approximation, for all practical purposes, I can pretend it is true. I think I have a good explanation now. If I take a very small time interval, call it delta t, then in this time interval, starting right now, I will drive approximately 180 kilometers per hour times delta t. This is an approximation, and it is a better approximation the smaller the time interval is. That is my explanation of what it means that my velocity right now is 180 km per hour. Notice that this explanation smells of limit. Yes, there is a limit hidden behind it. I had been making an effort to avoid the word limit, but no more. It is impossible to properly define velocity without using limits. Let's define it then. There are two concepts. Average velocity and instantaneous velocity. Let's call the time t and the position x. The average velocity between two instances, t1 and t2, is easy. It requires no limits. It is the distance traveled, delta x, divided by the time interval, delta t. On the other hand, the instantaneous velocity at t1 is the limit as t2 approaches t1 of the average velocity between t1 and t2. Taking the limit as t2 approaches t1 is the same as taking the limit as the time interval delta t approaches zero. And that's the definition. We often denote this as dx over dt. But careful, this notation does not mean that I am dividing a number dx by a number dt. dx and dt are not numbers. Rather, the notation just means what I wrote. I divided delta x over delta t, and then I took a limit. When we write it this way, we call it the derivative of x with respect to t. In this example, I describe velocity as the rate of change of position with respect to time. But more generally, I can do the same thing with any two physical quantities if one depends on the other. If q and x are physical quantities and q depends on x, I can define the average rate of change as the change in q divided by the change in x. And I can define the instantaneous rate of change as the limit of the average rate of change as the change in x approaches zero. We will also call this the derivative of q with respect to x. Okay then, so far there are two different things I have called derivative. In this video, I have defined dx over dt, which is best understood as the derivative of a physical quantity with respect to another physical quantity. In a previous video, I defined f prime, 
the derivative of an abstract function f. These are not separate ideas. These two concepts are entirely the same. Let's see why. Let's go back to the situation where t represents time, x represents position, and x is a function of time. But now let's give a name to this function and call it f. So x is f of t. Then the derivative of x with respect to t is, as before, the limit of distance traveled over time interval, as the time interval approaches zero. I can write the time interval as t2 minus t1, and then the limit as delta t approaches zero is the same as the limit as t2 approaches t1, and the distance traveled is the position at t2, f of t2, minus the position at t1, f of t1. But this is exactly what we call f prime of t1 in the previous video. In conclusion, all these ways of thinking of derivative, a slope, as instantaneous rate of chains, as instantaneous velocity, with a definition for an abstract function f, they are the same, and they all require using limits. There is no way to define derivative without a limit.